to you. Whoever believes in me, whoever believes in me has, has everlasting life. Everlasting life. Who said that? Good. Does Jesus tell lies? No. Raise your hand if you believe in Jesus. What does Jesus say you have in that verse? Um, everlasting life. Good. Good. Now here's the key question. When does that verse say you have everlasting life? Say it louder. When you believe. Did you get that? One more time, a little louder. When you believe. If you believe in Jesus, raise your hand. If you believe in Jesus right now, raise your hand. What does Jesus say you have? And when do you have that? Because you what? Believe. Not because of all these other things. Now, when you believe in Jesus, do you know what God does to your heart? He changes it. When He changes your heart, what happens to your life? There you go. If you try to change and come to Jesus, you can't. Can the leopard change his spots or the Ethiopian change his skin? Neither can you do good which are accustomed to doing evil. So many people are trying to repent. We don't have power to repent. But if you're willing... And you put all your faith in Jesus' blood. All your faith, not 50, 90, 75. All your faith in Jesus' blood. Knowing that God is already satisfied. And when you're satisfied, you have faith. And when you have faith, your heart says, ah. And when your heart says, ah. Then all that stuff you're wrestling with, fears and anxieties and worries and all that stuff just goes. The real repentance isn't out there. The real repentance is in here. And if you get this right in here, the rest of it will take care of itself. But how do you repent for your heart? You can't. you got to get a new heart. And by faith in the blood, God says, I will purify your heart by faith. And when I purify your heart by faith, I will give you a new heart. Your whole life will change. And when your life changes, don't go back to trying. Trying don't save you. Trying don't keep you saved. Trusting is what saves you. You trust Christ's blood to save you, and you trust Christ's blood to keep you. It's not in trying, it's in trusting. It's not in striving, it's in resting. Now, if you mess up again, let me say this. Don't pray and ask for forgiveness. Here's the problem with that. If you mess up again and pray and ask for forgiveness, I'll tap you on your shoulder and I'll say, did he forgive you? You say, I'm not quite sure, let me try again. Please forgive me. Uh, did he forgive you? I'm not quite sure. Let me try again. Please forgive me. And pretty soon you're going to be back down to 90 or 80. 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, confession is a reaffirmation of your faith. Confession is, God, I confess I blew it. God, I'm sorry. God, I confess the blood paid for that. And I confess that you rose Jesus to tell me it's paid in full. I thank you that you're satisfied. I'm satisfied. Get up, dust yourself off, move forward. If you get back into praying and asking, I've shared the gospel with thousands. You're going to go back down to 20 and 50 because did he, did he forgive you? I don't know. Let me try again. Pray and ask. I had one person said, pray and ask sincerely. Oh, God. Oh, God. Forgive me. Did he? I don't know. Let me try. Oh, God. Forgive me. I mean, just work that sincerity out. Be real, real sincere. Does, does sincerity pay for your sins? Always put yourself back in that courtroom and imagine yourself as a guilty murderer and ask yourself, is any of that stuff going to pay? Only the blood. Only the blood. And when you understand what he went to, you understand it's already paid. Boy, there's gratefulness in your heart. Boy, there's thankfulness in your heart. Everything changes. Okay? Uh, imagine yourself as a guilty murderer, which we've done today, and you're in a court, and the executioner comes, <coughs> excuse me, and he says, I got to execute you because you've committed heinous crimes. And you look at him and you say, Well, I don't think I deserve to be executed. And he says, Well, why not? Did you commit the crimes? And you say, Yeah, I did. Well, why don't you deserve to be executed? So you grab the executioner and you take him back to yourself. And you say, Mr. Executioner, um, I cleaned the bars on the window and I made my cot and I cleaned the cobwebs out of the corner. What's he going to say to you? Those measly what? 
works don't pay what you owe. Offering God all this stuff doesn't pay what you owe. Now, here's the flip side. He comes to you, you fall to your knees, and you say, I can't pay. Have mercy on me. He leaves, comes back, lifts your chin up, says you're free to go. What do you mean I'm free to go? Somebody has died in your place. You leave. Your heart changes. I deserve to die. That was supposed to be me. Somebody else did that for me. Wow. So you get up early next morning, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and you get yourself a mop and a bucket, and you go back to the court, and you say, I can never repay you for what you did, but I have a new heart. I have a thankful heart. I have a grateful heart. And I want to clean the whole jail for you. You spend the whole day cleaning the jail. You go home, you sleep that night, get up next morning, come back with the jail. Those works are acceptable. Why? Because you're not trusting the works, you're trusting Christ alone. The previous works are not acceptable because you're trusting the 